All right, well, cheers, everybody. Cheers. We are at uh, episode three of Drink Local. We are at Fame Lounge, back at Fame Lounge. Good place to be. Nice, great place. And uh, I'm here with uh, Benjamin Anglin, a.k.a. Jammin. Yep. And uh, so they call me uh, Jammin at the studio, so. Jammin at the studio from Team 1010. Team 1010, yep. All right. So, so what are we? Well, we're going to start, actually. Roxanne has uh, has poured us a, uh, a blind. We always start with a blind tasting, right. so we don't okay. know what this is. All right. And which keeps us kind of honest. Yep. And, uh, and then uh, later on, we're going to be tasting some IPAs. So okay. that should All be right. exciting, and we're going to... We're gonna do a bunch of crazy things today. Cool. So but we're gonna start off. So just dive into this right. one right here. We can. It's dark for sure. Mm. Oh wow. Mm, maybe like an imperial stout type thing. Mm -hmm. um, not not super bitter, nice nice smoky, has a, has a smooth finish to it. Yeah, um, nice kind of coffee, chocolatey. Like, like at first, I, I a hint of, of caramel, but not so much. But a, a stronger coffee. Finish yeah, coffee, it. maybe like bitter chocolate, dark chocolate right, finish. Right, right, height. Yep. Not a real hoppy nose. Definitely, I don't think super strong alcohol. Maybe sort of mid mid, mid range, mm -hmm. seven. Six seven percent. Right. Um, mm. Bitterness of the coffee and uh, kind of like a, uh, a higher, uh, that, like a almost like a ninety percent type of a chocolate. That there's not a lot of not a lot of sweet to it. Yeah yeah yeah, like a really bitter chocolate right. kind of in the finish. That's some of the bitterness of the hops in the finish. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, nice, right. really nice finish. Nice kind of warming. Mm. That, that's looks, something I could drink a bunch of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in fact, it looks almost like a little bit of a like an espresso with the crema on the top. Uh -huh. Yeah, it does. It has almost a coffee appearance to it. Very so nice. I, I have no idea what this is. Does uh, Does Roxanne know what this is? Uh, well, you know, you guys are drinking the Game of Thrones Take the Black Stout. Game of Thrones. So it is a stout. All right. What's it taste like? Um, so oh, Game of Thrones. Game awesome. Of Thrones. Great. Well, anyway, you can, you can cheers. So uh, a good play a lot start of video to, games uh, with this. <laughs> <laughs> a good start to episode three. So uh, thanks to Roxanne at Thank Fame you, Roxanne. Lounge for uh, for pouring this, and I think she'll be joining us a little bit later. Great. As we um, as we get into the tasting. So um, let's see. I'll go ahead and we'll do the uh, Ballast Point news for today. Oh, so I always like to say a little bit about what's going on with Ballast Point Brewing mm -hmm. Company. Um, so we are, uh, well, the Sculpin, um, oh gosh, what's the name of it? Thrilllist.com has named it the uh, top, uh, top IPAs in the world. The Sculpin IPA has been named the number two IPA in the world behind the famous Blind Pig yes. IPA from uh, wow. Vinny at Russian River. So yeah. that, we're up in very That's good company huge. with that. That is huge, the world's number two IPA. Um, a lot of people would argue it's number one, but right. hard to argue. Right, Vinny, right. Vinny Chiller is a kind of blind pig, maybe invented the West Coast IPA style. Well, and so I wanted to ask about that. Sure. Is that, you know, with Chiller's, uh, you know, they have a, uh, a, you know, from their wine perspective, right. and, and speculate they do a, a late harvest, which is just, you know, a late harvest is, is in this phenomenal. Yeah. So did they take some of that, and when they take that into their brewing, I mean, that type of... Uh, well, so, well, so Blind Pig was, I mean, Vinny did brew in Temecula, okay. but it was strictly beer. It was okay. di it was distinct from the winery operation. And then um, and then he moved up to Russian River Brewing right. Company. Okay. So up there, he resurrected the recipe for the Blind Pig IPA up at Russian River. Okay. So that's it's it's a Blind Pig label brewed at Russian River Brewing Company. All right. Um, but yeah, so he started off, you know, his family owned the winery, and in he disappointed them by going into the beer business. <laughs> and in... <laughs> Yet he's got a number one uh, beard that he produces too. He oh yeah absolutely very very highly uh, very highly regarded. So and um, let's see what else we got. Ballast Point also Sierra Nevada in Brewing Company is going to be doing a uh, next summer they're releasing a 12 pack of 12 beers from all, every all around the country different okay. cities and then they're going to be going on a tour to all those cities doing a festival event and uh, Ballast cool. Point Brewing Company has been selected as the brewery to represent San Diego. And they're gonna be brewing awesome. uh, at 
Sierra Nevada Brewing Company, but a version of, or will be following the Ballast Point recipe for the uh, the Ballast Point Fathom India Pale Lager. Very will nice. be the Ballast Point contribution to uh, to the uh, cool. the nationwide 12 pack. So that's kind of exciting news. On the Ballast <laughs> that's Point. That's big. Track. That is big. Yeah, things are things are good. Yeah, and and they've moved. Move to another bigger location, right? We're getting ready to. Is that right? We that, yeah, that's going to take till probably June, July okay. before uh, the new the new brewery opened. But the tasting room opened about a um, uh, month ago. I was down there over the weekend, and okay. uh, lots of new stuff on tap now. That they're starting to the little they have a little tiny five barrel brew house there just to put out experimental brews. Mm -hmm. So if you want to really like learn what hops do, they've got the same brew with this four different hops in it so you can taste boom okay that's that hop that's that hop and okay. we'll do a little of that today we're gonna do oh, a little, hop, cool. little hop tasting today very cool so uh so yeah good stuff and i, and I had a question um okay. from looking at the the last episode i know you know there's there's pretty much everything is done with the co2 and the, that's how they push the beer through but i know that um justin was talking about how they there's some old you know old school type right. where and so you don't use the co2 it's really the the hand Cool. Sure. But I was reading also, um, have you done anything with the, the nitro? I've heard that kind of is something for something probably even like this might. Yeah, and so be the, the, the beer that probably most people are familiar with that's on nitro is Guinness Stout. If okay. you have it in a bar and it pours, when they, you know, they pour it three quarters of the way full and they let the head form up. Right. And, uh, and actually, the very first beer that Ballast Point ever brewed was a, uh, it was called the Copper Ale, okay. it was on nitro. And uh, actually, it was called the Ballast Point Special, and then later it became the Copper Ale, um, which is sort of the recipe that's now the Calico Amber Ale. Uh -huh. But so originally it was on nitro, and and uh, you know we thought, wow, we got this. This is it's so different, it's so new. People are going to go crazy over it, and bartenders were like, yeah, well, we don't know what that is, and uh, and we couldn't sell it. So that recipe kind of went away. But if you if you go down to our San Diego locations, it's it's back on tap about 15 years later. The uh, the original recipe, the first wow. beer that Ballast Point brewed, is the the copper ale that's on nitro. So yeah, no, and um, uh, I'm going to be brewing a recipe down there in uh, January that mm -hmm. is uh, was originally done as a cask ale in the cask with the beer engine, and we'll probably be doing some cask versions of that and some nitro versions of that as well. So, cool. so we'll, I'll have more information on that uh, after I brew it, and I know exactly when it's likely to come out. Awesome. So. Well, you know, and, and when, so, you know, as a brewmaster, you've got these things going on in your heads and you know, things you might want to, you know, to craft and, and different things you want to pull out of. So, do you just have this kind of this recipe floating around up there, or, or is it you scratch it on it as you're having this, you scratch it on the back of a napkin and go, I'm going to do this, or, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you see family recipes that are handed yeah. down, and, you know, my wife has something that her mom made, and, and it's like, these, it's, all you know half scribbled and stuff like that yeah so when you when you're talking about you know that recipe that was 15 years from when you first started right is do you i mean is there something that's like okay well this is exactly what we did or is just kind of a oh no 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 they're, 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 you know when when you're working in a brewery you have um you know our recipes are built on spreadsheets and programs because right. okay. we know you know, because if you want to change it from one brewery to another, you might be getting a different hop extraction, right? right? So all of a sudden, you put the same amount of hops in, and it's way more bitter or way less bitter. Mm -hmm. So you need to be able to adjust your recipes depending on where it's brewed and what the brew house is and okay. how, fit, how how that brew house works. So, no, no, they're they're pretty pretty dialed in, precise things. Okay. You know, so, so it's not like something like you're scratching going, you know, because I know you you you're well, when very you start scien developing scientific them, yeah. when you're when you're you know the process of. Yeah. The things in your how well, it's a, a chemistry of how all those are gonna. When you're starting to develop it, you're home brewing, so okay. you're, you're 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 brewing a batch and you're brewing a batch and you're keeping really careful notes actually, so you know what happened. Right. And then, as you're tasting, okay, I want to adjust this, I want to adjust this. But once once you're producing a recipe at a brewery, right. you want to be consistent. Right. You want to you want to replicate. You want it to taste the same. Exactly. So you um, yeah you you keep very careful logs of what you're doing and uh, and what happened during the brew and the tasting notes and all of that. Right. All right, so um, we're here again with from episode number one, Roxanne. Hello. Uh, Welcome. Who's manager of Fame Lounge? That's me. Yes. All right. So what's the deal with all these glasses? I'm gonna drink all of this beer. Wait. No, these this are. Wow. We're gonna. Uh, <laughs> so the theme for the night is where we we said we were gonna be tasting some IPAs, and you guys have probably heard beer geeks 
sticking their nose in beers and saying, ooh, I get black currant and mango and I get, you know, toast and mm -hmm. so so how do you learn to do that, right? Either right. either yeah. you either you just wing it or you're extraordinarily good at remembering flavors. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but one way you can learn to do that is you do something called standards. So okay. creating okay. standards is so we've taken a, a pretty a, a pretty low profile beer, a beer that uh, doesn't have a huge amount of aroma. And what we're going to be doing with it, a pretty light beer, we're going to be adding some ingredients to all these beers. Okay. And um, by smelling those ingredients, you guys can kind of then compare. Once we pour the IPAs, you can go, okay, wait a minute, is that mango? And then you can pick up, here's some beer with a chunk of mango in it. And, oh, yeah, that does taste like mango. Or, no, no, I'm wrong, that's not mango. So it's a way to sort of educate yourself about what the aromas are in beer. Now, the one thing I want to emphasize is, Brewmasters do not throw these things into beer. The beers that we're going to taste today are going to be made out of just malt grain, barley grain, mm -hmm. hops, you know, water, and yeast. So, okay. so the ingredients today are, are things that the aromas that come out of the malt and the hops and the fermentation by the yeast okay. produce mm -hmm. some of the same flavor compounds as these things. So, so um, just because you see me throwing things in beer doesn't mean brewmasters throw those things in beer. <laughs> I'm a little worried. I don't know. Oh, it's, it's, like, like, it's like David Copperfield. We're going to see some things oh, going right. exploding oh. and stuff like that. Okay, so, so. You, you just ignore me now and talk about fame. Oh, <laughs> nothing so. to see behind the curtain. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure he's not going to. I know. Mango. Very, uh, okay. Now, and these standards are, is this something that's, International or is this just like U.S. type of standard? Well, it, it's sort of like so in the wine industry, right? You, uh -huh. you. That's kind of where the idea came from of okay. using standards to, to train your palate, to train your okay. yourself about this. That was mango. This is pear. There oh, all right. And it's really it's just a, a chunk of pear. Um, now they have some that are where you actually have a chemical that you're adding, right? So, so that can be. Oh, okay. Roxanne, by the way, is actually running this place right now as we're speaking. So she has customers. She's got to pay the bills. So right. she'll be popping in and out of our conversation today. Okay, so that was pear. Let's see what else. We're gonna do some toast. Sometimes we're describing toast. Oh, so seriously, we're gonna put toast. We're in? gonna put toast in beer. There we go. Now so is it just? I mean, was it butter? No, I didn't butter. <laughs> I did not butter the toast. Okay, and then let's see what else do we have here. We've got oh yes, obviously for um, IPA citrus peel oh. is a big descriptor for especially the West Coast right, right. California IPA. So we're gonna very cool. We're gonna take off a little citrus peel, orange peel. Let's throw orange peel in that one and grapefruit peel. You'll hear other ones described, but we'll start with orange and grapefruit as our stand-ins for citrus peel. And obviously those are different, so we'll throw. Fresh grapefruit peel in one. Sweet. Not really sweet. Um, Great. And then let's go for some actual hop variety. So just some some hops themselves. So we're gonna have this is some. Uh, you know, you have to be careful. Make sure you don't you know get stopped afterwards. All these little bags of things. Little bags of things. So <laughs> so these right here, like you guys have probably seen hops looking like those those pretty pictures that right. look like little pine cones right. or pineapples. Um, so what the what the uh, the hop makers do for better long term storage? You can use flower hops like that, but they're also they take them and they they basically run them through a, a machine okay. that powder powders them and pelletizes them, and they look like oh. rabbit food. It does. So, I thought that's what you're. Yeah. On. So I better keep these straight. So this is tetanang, and that's going to be very typical of a European, a German style hop that you might okay. find in a uh, a German pilsner. Probably not going to get too much of that in West Coast IPAs. And then the ones that are going to look rabbit, rabbit more like the, beer. But we do have, I think we're going to taste a Belgian IPA too. Okay. Um, and then we've got, this is, this is called, this is Waimea, which is actually from New Zealand, but it's actually very similar to uh, a California, a West Coast, like a Cascade type hop. So I'm going to leave the little signs out so I remember what they are. Okay. Actually, I better leave the bags next to me. I will forget. And then I'll mix them all up and then we'll be wrong. And then... Um, also typical of a West Coast style hop. This is Galena, which is, which it's is, old. Galena <laughs> is, is typically seen as a um, as a bittering hop, not a flavor hop. But now, a lot of the West Coast IPAs are using bittering hops as a flavoring hop. Bittering hops have a very kind of piney, resinous smell. So let's give the hops are going to take a moment. They'll dissolve, and this stuff okay. will turn as just look like green sludge. Um, nice. 
Yeah. So go ahead and why don't we... This is uh, like Ask Mr. Science. I this mean, is this Ask is, Mr. Science. This is, this is cool. how you learn how to do this stuff. This and it's fun to cool. throw a party. Uh -huh. You can do this with wine or beer. And, and depending on what kind of beer you're serving, you know, go, go to beeradvocate.com and look at what kinds of descriptions people are getting and say, oh, yeah, I got some of that in my fridge. I got oh, some of that. Okay. And, and you can build some. Um, the same thing if you're, if you're doing wines, if you're... You know, doing Chardonnays, you'd put out a different set of tasters. If you're doing a Cabernet right. Sauvignon, you'd put out a different set of, of standards. And, and this is a small representative. I chose these because these are things that you might taste in an, in an IPA. Okay. So, so do you want to... And is this part of, you know, when you were talking at your last yeah. episode with uh, the different levels for the Cicerone? Yeah. Is this something that would be involved with that? Is that at the say that third I, level? I'm or? assuming they do. One of the things I know they do in Cicerone School is they, so I'm putting out standards here for flavors that are that are positive flavors, okay. flavors that are good flavors. In Cicerone School, one of the things you do is you train yourself for uh, off flavors, for flavor flaws. Oh, okay. Things that you don't want in beer. Right. And those could be the result of a bad process at the brewery, but often it's mishandling of beer, okay. um, you know, Letting kegs sit in the hot sun in Palm Springs for a couple of days and <laughs> get cooking um, instead of keeping them nice and cold, especially right. craft beer, okay. is yep. usually not. It's not you know. Um, it's not pasteurized. It's not designed to, you know, be boiled. So you right. want to keep it cool or keep it in the fridge if at all possible, but keep it cool. You know, here in Palm Springs, you don't want to park it in your car on a summer day no. and cook it up to 200 yeah. degrees. <laughs> You can do that to you can do that to uh, a beer from a big brewery, but you don't want right. to you don't want to right. mistreat crap. You don't want to do that to a nice wine right. either. No, nope. um, absolutely. You don't want to cook it, so be be careful of your cars. <laughs> it's not good for pets or children or or beer. Right. So don't leave. That's true. Don't leave any of those things no, in your no, car. No, no, no. On a hot summer day. No. Um, All right. Take your beer with you wherever you go. <laughs> Into the air conditioning. Nice. Um, Nice. Just like you were your child. Yes. Yes. Beer is a child. I, I do. Yes, it is. <laughs> treat it. Treat it as that. So. Treat it as that. So I don't know. You want to give it. So so try. Uh, yeah. Sticking your nose. You know, so, give it a swirl to. And, and then this was the. Uh, I believe the mango. This and is mango, and, and if you you know you can keep put your hand over it and let a little little build up in the head space. And these will these will warm up the more they sit. You'll get a little more of that that character. And if they're not strong enough, I can add more. So I don't think the mango is strong enough, was no. it? No. I'll throw a little more in there. Let it let it warm up, open up here a little bit. Yeah. And that's you know even though if you know what's in it, just like we did the blind tasting, yeah. I think that sometimes it's good just to kind of, you know. Yeah. Take a, you know. And sometimes you can overpower these. You know, you can put too much in, and then it just mm -hmm. it, you, you miss like what it would taste like within the beer. Right. Yeah, that mango needs to needs to develop a little more. Yeah. Did I put it in yeah. this one? I didn't put nope. it in that one. Okay. This is orange peel. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So th and that would be a hop. So these all would be kind of a hop character. Okay. The the some of the fruity flavors might also come from yeast. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially ale yeast produce some fruity characters. Not like the citrus peel, but things like the like the pear. Um, this is toast. That would be a malt character. And most of the IPAs we're going to taste are going to be hops. The whole point of IPAs is Hop, hop, hop. So, that's yeah, and that would be something that comes from a toasty or a toasted malt kind of character. Wow, okay. that's amazing. Okay, that's that one's pretty dominant. That's the that's the grapefruit peel. Yeah, I, mean, I just wanna. Yeah. Difference between grapefruit and orange mm -hmm. peel. It's yeah. Pretty pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Let's see, and the hops haven't really started to. Well, maybe a little bit. There's the tetanang. That's the that's the German style hop. More European, described as a kind of a spicy hop. Yeah. It'll it'll, it'll it'll it spice. hasn't turned into green sludge yet. Once you see green sludge, it'll it'll be a little more obvious. Well, that's there. A, yeah because like yeah. you said, it's been very compacted. And then this is sort of a, a, a West Coast style hop right there. So so looking for citrusy. That's the kind of hop where you would get some of these citrus flavors, the citrus peel type mm -hmm. things. Uh, we know we started just we haven't tasted any beer. Well, we need you. We need you to pour us beer. All right. All right. Plus, you have to. You have to. Okay. So do, is that coming? I think. Well, yeah. These need a little, a little more time. These need yeah. a little more time. All right. Well, let's and let's. Then, uh, uh, didn't we do? We did three, right? So far. And this the, is Galena, and that one is again. It hasn't it hasn't really opened up yet. That's going to be more um, kind of. It's got some of that citrus character, but it's also got kind of a resin pine right. pine tree resinous kind of character to it. Smell. 
and hops are pretty pretty complex. So, mm -hmm. so, so what are you opening there? Bottle of Moscato. Okay, that's what the orange is on there for. Hmm. Okay. So when you're in, in, in the, the process when you're brewing things, is that uh, you would have those those pellets would be something that you would put in or you would actually use the original? We use pellets or flower hops depending on when. Usually for like a dry hopping we might use a flower hop. Okay. Or, um, but usually for a boil hop the, these are easier to handle. Okay. So we use, we'll use the pellet hops in the boil. And I'm sure there's got to be some yeah. scientific uh, equation that says this compress is going to equal so much of the... Yeah, it's by, it's by weight, okay. and um, the hops are all rated in terms of their, uh, their percentage of alpha acids by weight. And alpha acid is the thing that when it's boiled in beer, um, when, it, when it goes into the boil, and we'll see this next week at Coachella Valley Brewing Company, uh, um, when the hops go into the beer, as, as it boils, it extracts um, some percentage of those hop alpha acids, and that's okay. what gives beer its bitter flavor. Okay. So some hops are added to the boil, and they're boiled, and those, depending on how much hops and how long, that's where a beer gets its bitterness that balances the sweetness of the malt. Uh -huh. um, and then the hops that are added either very late in the boil or at the end of the boil or with the IPAs we're having, these are mostly dry hops. So the hops get no heat whatsoever. Okay. They're actually going to be added um, to the fermenter during fermentation, after fermentation, in the case of... Justin last week was talking about the cask ales. Right, right. There might be a bag of fresh leaf hops sitting inside that cask. Oh, okay. So, um, so, oh, so the, the the basically the kind of the less handling, the the closer the hop is to the beer, the more you're going to get a really fresh hop aroma. Okay. And the kind of the classic European beers didn't really have that. They had more of a muted hop aroma, and so the one of the things that characterizes IPAs and people who love IPAs is is that. You know, big, monstrous, fresh right. hop, that aroma of just hops that you're getting. Right. So IPAs are a celebration of hops. And so so, so we're going to be uh, smelling some hops and smelling some hop flavors and okay. tasting a couple IPAs. All right. All right. Yeah. As soon as Roxanne. That, the toast makes me hungry. Is it? Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so while we're in fame, I just want to point out one thing about it is I've actually walked past this place a few times because mm -hmm. I saw the microbrews, right. but I also saw Cigar Lounge, and I was like, oh, I don't want to sit in a place that's really smoky. Right. And uh, I've been in here a few times now, and it's kinda, there's a pleasant aroma of, of some really nice-smelling cigars, but they have, a, they have a really good ventilation system here. It is amazing. And uh, so right now there's nobody smoking, but I've been in here with you know people smoking cigars, and, and it's not... It's not, uh, it's, it's fine. You right. know, the smoke is going out through that ventilation system. You're not sitting here getting your eyes itchy, breathing secondhand smoke. Right. And, and, and it's okay. You can taste beers. Uh, you can smell the aromas in beer. Right. So, um, so yeah, it's a cigar it, lounge, and it's, it's a very cool place. It's a very chill place. Yeah, it, and it's not smoky. And it isn't. So when we were doing a blind tasting, and we kind of right. start off each episode that way, is that if we did a blind taste with Ballast Point, is it something that you're able to, I mean, is it that distinguishable that you're able to say, hey, I, that's that's a ballast point? That's a ballast point beer. And, you know, that's a good question. I kind of wonder that myself because a lot of times your your perception of beer changes as you taste it, right. depending on what you've had to eat, depending on what environment you're in, you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, you know, you always see the thing where the wine tasters, oh, this came from this vineyard, this wine, and that's, that's, that's kind of BS. Right. Um, you know, they've done stuff where they take, you know, people and they put brown paper bags on wines and they have a very hard time tasting it. But I, I, there is a story, so um, the, the world's largest sort of um, pur purveyor of, of yeast, so most microbreweries don't have the, the lab facility to, okay. to, to do their own yeast analysis and bank their own yeast and do their own yeast propagation. So there's a company down in San Diego called White Labs, mm -hmm. which actually began as a supplier of uh, beer to Home Brew Mart, which is the parent company of Ballast Point Brewing Company. And so White Labs began as, as Home Brew Mart Houston, and now it's worldwide. They're, they're sold in every country in the world, and they supply breweries in all over the world. And, um, but one thing White Labs did early on with us, is, and they still do this, and actually I was thinking I would call, call them up and ask for uh, a, a, a flight of these for their tasters. So they would take um, a run of our beer before we fermented it, and we would put it into 30 different um, carboys, like homebrew things, 
and White Labs pitched a different yeast into each one okay. and then fermented them and bottled them uh, as a way of, of kind of educating people what is the effect of yeast on beer. Because that's kind of nebulous. It's really easy to talk about hops. It's really easy to talk about malt. Uh, right. Yeast is a little more subtle. So they ran about about 30, I think it was actually about 20, about 20 different um, uh, fermentations, and they bottled it, and they brought it, and they had all the brewers come. And so tasting, okay, this is what it tastes like with this yeast, this is what it tastes like with this yeast, and so I'm with my guys from Ballast Point. And we got to one, and as soon as we tasted it, we all said, that's our yeast. That's our, because we were, it was the dead on, that's the Ballast Point house yeast strain. And, um, and Chris told us, no, it's not. That actually came, comes from a brewery in England, Burton-on-Trent, England. Really? <laughs> and so one of the things is you never really know where your yeast came from. We right. got it. We, we got it from a brewery up in the Pacific Northwest okay. about 20 years ago, and we didn't know where they had gotten it from. And frankly, they didn't know the origin of their yeast either. So people get yeast from, from one place or another. Now, now a lot of people just go to White Labs for their yeast. Okay. But we, we didn't really know the origin of our yeast until... We tasted it. And we were like, "Nope, that's exactly that's exactly our yeast, and we're absolutely sure about it." And uh, came from a, a brewery in Burton on Trent, England, which is kind of the home of the of the English pale ales. Is mm -hmm. where the, mm -hmm. the, the the sort of English pale ales come from. Burton on Trent, a place known for really really hard water. Um, but if you're thinking like bass, mm -hmm. um, it's not it's not the bass strain. It's from a smaller brewery out there. But okay. but. Uh, we're we're like 99% sure. Yep, that's our yeast. That's right. so, our so yeah. So sometimes you you can because there's something really distinctive about it that right. really really hits you. Right. But um, but yeah. So that's that's a okay. sort of an answer to your question. And and so you know I know everybody it's all everybody talks about it. oh it's the hops the hops the hops. But yeah. it sounds like I mean the yeast is kind of is the magic to it. It's it's everything. Hops is going to be and the IPAs we're going to taste is like. Hops up front sometimes right. in, a, in a big IPA, that's all you get. Um, but there, there should be a little balance there. And the yeast gives it some background. So even if there's hops, the way the way the yeast finishes it is a really, it's going to have an influence. Mm -hmm. And the influence is, is bigger than you think, which is why I think for a future one, I would love to have, talk to White Labs and see if we can do a, a yeast okay. tasting where we're just tasting the same beer and how it changes across different yeasts, I think would be a really... An interesting thing because right. that's a hard, hard kind of tasting to do, but it really does have a big effect. That cool. I think most people, hops is that a, hops fun. is kind of obvious. Yeast is a right. little more subtle. Right. Yeah. That'd be fun. So subtle but important. So what? Uh, we're like I said, we're ready to start tasting some IPAs. We've yes. explored some of the standards, and uh, so what is our? What do we have? This is here? the Stone Ruination IPA. Nice. I'm sure everyone's uh, familiar with this one, but Stone, North County, San Diego, opened the mm -hmm. same week Ballast Point did. So, oh. so same age right. as the brewery, not the beer. But. Hmm. All right. So going to our standards, what do you, uh, what do we think we're getting out of that? Or we could be getting. This isn't every possible flavor in an IPA. <laughs> You've got the mic. Mm. <laughs> You've got the mic. Oh, no, no, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Thinking, thinking? Um, all I can taste is pine. Yeah. Oh, pine, all right. All. So, let's, so let's try the, try the, mm, the, the Galena stand. Hops oh, standard. Uh, I mean, oh, thank you. Yeah. There we go. Galena Hops. And I'm not saying it's Galena, but that's pretty typical. Oh, don't drink that. I'm going to drink it. Oh, don't drink the standards. All right. Just smell them. Damn it. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, again, that's why. That's super why, bitter. That's yeah. my. <laughs> no, no. So what is it? Was that? Do you think that's that sort of? Yes. Oh my god. Of, yeah, pretty much. And right? actually, I'm kind of glad yeah. I tried that. I'm not. So there's that. That's that's sort of a, the bittering style, West Coast style bittering hop. So definitely. <laughs> yeah. That's a. Yep. Definitely. That. Okay. It's forward in the nose there. What else we guys? What else we getting out of this? Kind of piney. It's pine. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah. Pine all the way. Nice bitter finish, but a nice kind of a sweet balance there at the mm -hmm. end. Kind of a nice mm -hmm. bitter, bitter but balanced with some sweetness bitter, at yep. the end. Not just uh, sometimes a IPAs can just be brutally bitter in the finish, but this one has a, I think a nice balance there. Yeah, it, it does. It, it finishes off smooth. Like I said, that that bitter hits yeah. up front, but so as it's opening smooth. up, do you get more of a sort of a spicy European? Kind of hop in there also, or 
Mm. That I mean, this is really almost. No, not that. No. Mm-hmm. But I, but you know what? This almost has a bit sort of, of a, more the more floral kind of hop. Yeah. Okay, so this is more like a like a yeah. cascade centennial style. So kind of that mm-hmm. floral. Pass me. I promise that. not to drink it. Yeah, just smell. Oh that. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. Mm-hmm. I think definitely. Definitely that. So some pineiness, some of that kind of cascade. floral citrus. Yeah. So what about the citrus? Does it seem like any grapefruit or any grapefruit. orange peel or maybe not orange peel? No. Probably a little bit on the grapefruit, a little lighter. Yeah. Grapefruit. Lighter citrus. Let's see what you think of the grapefruit peel. Definitely. Not toasty, I don't, I don't think. Not no. getting a lot of malt character out of it. And that's typical of an IPA, is you're going to get mostly hops. Yeah. How about, how about the sort of pear? No. No. Nor I. No. Okay. So uh, so that's the ruination IPA. Mm-hmm. Yep. So any other any other thoughts on it? Really nice nice head retention, nice lace on it, nice color to it. So what would you pair with this if you're just IPAs are kind of their own thing. Um, you need some pretty, um, yeah, it goes good with, with a lot of different foods. Um, what would I pair with this? You can see this with a nice piece of fish, grilled fish, coming up there. So mm-hmm. the fish kind of a little blandness, but the beer kind of sets that off. Brightens um, it up. Brightens it up that. a little bit, yeah. What about if you did <clears throat> something even with a little bit of a, a blackening or a Cajun type, something yeah, like absolutely. that, you think? Yeah, stand up to that. Take sure. that? Yeah, yeah, grilled fish or a blackened okay. fish, something barbecued would be good. Right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, thanks. So that's the uh, Stone yeah. Ruination. Stone Ruination. Okay. Yep. Nice. All right, yeah, All Roxanne, right. so what are we, uh, what are we, what, which IPA are we tasting All next? right, this is that Ballast Point Big Eye, actually, one of yours. All right, I did contribute to the, not, not 100% mine, but mm-hmm. Yusef and I, this was mm-hmm. one that I contributed to the recipe on. Smell a little bit of the, uh, like the flower. Okay. Floral. So, real the, floral um, Whatever the, the flower the cas- is it cascade? cascade? Is that yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so it's it's a uh, it's a cascade centennial. Is the mm-hmm. hopping in this? So, okay. Yeah, definitely. You're you're right on there. Am Box I the stand? only person getting pear here? Pear. I really. All right, well, let's go to the pear standard. Pear. And see if we agree. Yeah, I think I think so. I think you got that. I'm getting some citrus peel, more like an orange peel. I think kind of citrusiness. I get a little pear. But subtle. And then toastiness. A little malt toast. Not as toasty as that standard. I think our standard might be a little over the top. <laughs> <laughs> but a little less toast, a little right. more pear. It's a little unsubtle. <laughs> sink, the, sink the toast there. A little too much. A little too toasted. Mm. <laughs> <Got this. laughs> but I'm bummed. All right, so what about color, so, finish? I'm not going to talk much about this one, so. It's a great color. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's clear. A little, little, little deeper color than a typical yep. IPA. There's yep. some Munich malt in there that's giving a little more, maybe a little more color than most IPAs will have. Smooth. It's very smooth. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the finish is... The finish. Kind, of a, kind of a nice, crisp, kind of a drier finish than, yeah. the, than the ruination. I mean, it just it seems like it's smooth all the way. I mean, it's where the ruination, it kind of hits you with that bitterness. Okay. And this is just, it seems very constant. All right. I, I can agree with that. More mm-hmm. even? All yeah. right. Okay. So right. what would we pair this with? What would we pair this with? I don't know. Hard, <laughs> I have a hard time on the food pair. I pair, with, I pair with everything. Um... <laughs> A beer right. for every occasion. A beer for every occasion. No, I'm. Uh, know, I'm not good on the pure, on the uh, the food pairing. Well, I would think that I would not pair it with chocolate. And that's, <laughs> no. I mean, generally bitter beers, not chocolate. Um. <laughs> Actually, you know, I think that probably um, you know being big eye. Okay. Mm-hmm. Something with you know a, a fish, everything mm-hmm. would definitely hold up to um, yeah. kind of a uh, a, a wild salmon. 
And I, IPAs like in that. general are gonna, you know, I mean, they're generally gonna pair up with the same kind of foods, and fish mm -hmm. is definitely mm -hmm. something they're gonna gonna pair okay. with. Um, you know, maybe not so much with a uh, a beef. You might want something a little sweeter body, right. but mm -hmm. um, but definitely something kind of blander thing. So what about like fish. a? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, what yeah. about like a um, apple glazed uh, chop, something like that, a little pork or something like oh, that? You're maybe good at this. you're good at this. Yeah, that <laughs> would be good. That would. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Absolutely. Wouldn't just kind of glaze that. Something you know. Mm. And okay, apple glazed mm. pork with big apple glazed pork. I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, with big eye. All, right. all right. Cheers to. We're the there. Big We're eye. there. All right. Let's get okay. that order. All right. Me too. Okay. All right. Ooh. All right. All right. Yeah. So, this is the the Belgian. This is this is the, the Troubadour. Belgian triple IPA that Roxanne poured for us before she had to get to it. Wow. Wow. And triple would mean higher alcohol. Double. Double would be maybe a seven eight percent range, and a triple okay. we're talking about probably a nine or ten percent range. So oh okay. So and and as we look at IPAs, I mean, what does IPA, IPA represent? What does I, it stand I, for? In India, it's an India pale ale, and they okay. were beers that were brewed by in Britain. So British Britain had the pale ales, okay. and they also had a lot of troops in India that wanted to drink beer, right. and so yep, they yep. would put it on ships with sails and sail them across the equator and then around Africa and then back over the equator and they found that beer was spoiled. Yeah, no refrigeration. So they, right. so they had to increase the alcohol, okay. which helps preserve the beer, and they had to increase the amount of hops, which okay. also hops are a preservative. Hops help to fight bacteria, keep oh. beer from spoiling. Okay. So that's where the, the, the British pale ales, but the British pale ales wouldn't have been nearly as hoppy. Uh -huh. So the, the IPA style West Coast brewers in California we're looking for what 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 style can we call it if we just want to really start to kick up the hops okay. and they they kind of got the IPA style which is a showcase for the hops so this okay. is a European IPA okay so it's probably not as hop hoppy as what we've been tasting it's very malty very malty a lot of you can t tell a lot of alcohol almost like kind of port sherry kind of right. flavors nutty right. that sherry I picked that warming. up Maybe raisiny, kind of dried, dried fruit. As far as the hops, I'm thinking they're using a, a little bit of a West Coast hop, maybe a blend of Cascade. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's got some of that floral citrus, but also, also some um, European hops, some of the spiciness and okay. soapiness. But not, not. I. The hops are more subtle. Cascade, I think. If okay. If anything is what I pick up. Wow, oh. nice mouthfeel on that. Creamy. Yeah. Very creamy. Nice bitterness finish. in the finish. But, smooth. Um, it's very smooth. Nice. Nice creamy, I mean, nice but, lingering bitterness. But um, but especially, though, for something if that high in alcohol yeah. content, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's very smooth for that. Oh, you know? absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> it, 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 um, this one could sneak up on you. You could get in trouble. <laughs> so, well, um, maybe that after you've had this, you would think you're a troubadour. Maybe you would. <laughs> so maybe Roxanne's going to come back with the mic and start the karaoke. There we go. All right. Well, exactly. Hey, come on down to Fame. Drink some great beer. Awesome IPA selection down here. Uh, and um, till next, till episode four. Four. Um, drink up. Cheers. Drink local. <laughs>